Eight minutes. How to auto land the 737 MAX in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Here we go, Captain. This tutorial is targeted to beginners, and the knowledge required to complete the auto land is close to zero. No need to pre configure the onboard computer, no need to have a degree on mathematics, no need for a paid service like Navigraph, nothing. In fact, all you need to know is how to give a heading and an altitude to the aircraft using the autopilot. You know what? It's even easier than configuring the clock on a microwave, so here is a 15 seconds recap about it. Flying the aircraft. Look right and focus on this big panel. Enable the autopilot clicking this button. Enable heading selection by clicking here, then move this rotary knob to steer the aircraft. Your selected heading is this pink dashed line. To change altitude, select it at this location then apply a vertical speed otherwise it won't move. Positive number for climb, negative number for descent. Is there anyone still listening? Did I lost some of you? Well, let's continue. Bonus. To control the airspeed, push this lever up then click the speed button. You can then set the desired airspeed moving this rotary knob. And that's it. Nothing harder than that. Well, okay. It might be more complicated than setting the clock on a microwave, and it was surely more than 15 seconds, but you get the point. Now let's get in the cockpit. We are approaching our destination airport at a reasonable altitude. Yeah, please don't try this at 30,000 feet, otherwise the descend might be rock and roll. So as I said, our destination airport is in front of us, and we are stable 7,000 feet, 250 knots. If you already have a flight plan, it's good, but if you don't, just open the flight pad, enter the destination, then select one of the runway, and be sure the approach is an ILS. Once everything is done, press Send Route to Avionics. A white path is now visible on the navigation display. Press Execute button to enable it. As you can see, our plane is not aligned with the runway. A good method is to go the opposite way in order to join the final approach course. To do that, turn the plane to a heading parallel to the runway axis. The pink dashed line might help you to do so. The plane is now on a back course. Next step, open the flight pad and press this button to open the chart. Select the ILS chart and find the ILS frequency of the approach. In our case, 108.7. Go to the COM panel and enter 108.70 on this section then click the double arrows to enable it. Your newly set frequency should appear at the top of the panel. Activate the data and check for the first waypoint altitude. In this case, it's pedal at 4,600 feet. This information is also available from the chart if necessary. This is our main target altitude to intercept the glide slope. Set this target altitude to your autopilot then give it a vertical speed of minus 700 feet per minute. Also reduce airspeed to 210 knots. Looking at the airport, we are still leaving it on the opposite runway direction, which is good. Remember that you can zoom in or zoom out on the navigation display using this rotary knob. Set it to whatever is comfortable for you. The plane is slowly descending while losing speed. Continue monitoring the navigation display during the descent. Once the plane passed your target waypoint, two solutions are possible. First one is to set a direct to the target waypoint, but it's risky because you won't control the angle at which the plane will join the final. As a result, let's go for the second option and do it by hand using the heading selection. Turn the plane perpendicular to the final approach course. Use the dashed pink line if necessary. The plane is now perpendicular to the runway and we can see it through the window. Approximately three miles from intersecting the runway axis, you would want to join the final approach course to do that, apply a heading selection that will go directly to the target waypoint. Once again, the pink dashed line is your friend. You can already see what is going on. 
The plane will turn to intercept the runway axis. While the plane is turning, click the APP button on the autopilot panel. It will arm the system to catch the ILS. For the frequent viewers of this YouTube channel, you might have noticed the Vorlock and GS on the FMA, meaning the autopilot will catch the localizer and glide slope as soon as they are available. For new viewers, do not hesitate to watch our full tutorial series on ILS approach. It might be useful stuff. Make small adjustment on your heading in order to match the pink dashed line on your target waypoint. Also, when approaching the target waypoint, reduce speed to 180 knots. As the airspeed decrease, lower flaps to 5 degrees. On the target waypoint, you should see these two diamonds in the middle of their respective field, meaning you are on the runway axis and on the glide slope. The airport is just in front of us, and the plane starts descending. If you want to double confirm, a Vorlock and GS should be in green on top of the primary flight display. Congratulations, the plane is armed for auto land. Now let's prepare the aircraft. Step 1 set the landing speed to the one calculated by your onboard computer. As we didn't configure the aircraft, we will set it to 140 knots. It's a bit fast, but it's safer for beginner pilots. Step 2. As the aircraft is losing speed, deploy flaps accordingly to a maximum of 30 degrees. Monitor the flaps position at this location. Flaps 30, and on the reference speed, it might be a good time to lower the landing gear, and if needed, set the auto brake to 3. Last thing to do is to arm the spoilers. In real life you would lift that up, and the lever would click and maintain its position. Unfortunately I am using the mouse, and it seems I have a harder time than expected. If you have any solution for that, please comment below. Okay, that's enough. It will be a landing without them. Well, considering we choose a higher than expected airspeed and considering we have no spoilers, it's gonna be a bouncy landing. Brace for impact. Anyway, everything is done now and you can cross your arm watching this beautiful bird coming its way to the runway. On final, monitor rollout and flare on the FMA telling you the plane is in charge Oh yeah, Ryanair style landing. Yep, that's the way to do it. That concludes our tutorial series on the 737 MAX. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to know more about ILS approach, feel free to check our deep dive video about it. Next will be the Vision Jet with the G3000 series, and we should continue on the A320, so that you guys can operate any common aircraft in the aviation industry. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe for more content. Happy landings, Captain.